Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we shall learn a bit about what we will see in the rest of this course on static analysis and code optimizations. Remember that this is a 6 hours course, and we will see a broad family of different subjects. So this video is just a glimpse of what is to come. The course is broad because compilers involve a lot of stuff. For instance, here's a list of related concepts that I got from Krishnan and Bada. He's a professor at the Indian Institute of Technology in Chennai. This list includes algorithms, artificial intelligence, automata theory, algebra, computer architecture, comp combinatorial optimizations, you name it. These techniques surface in the analysis of programs, and there are two ways to analyze a program. We can do it statically or dynamically. Do you know what are the differences between these two approaches? Static analysis try to discover information about a program without running it. The goal is just to look into the code and then infer properties about the program. Can you think about any example of static analysis? Dynamic analysis, in turn, will run the program to find out something about it, so they can observe the execution of the program. Can you think about examples? And can you think about the advantages and disadvantages of each one of these two approaches, static and dynamic analysis? Dynamic analysis, as I said, require executing the program. There are many ways to observe the execution. And so dynamic analysis techniques involve, for instance, profiling or dynamic test generation or emulation of the program, like Velgrind does, or instrumentation like we can do with the LVM compiler, for instance. And static analysis uh, do not require us to run the program. In this course, we will focus mostly on static analysis, but we will talk some about dynamic analysis too. In terms of static analysis, we will talk about the three main families, data flow analysis, constraint-based analysis, and type analysis. But don't worry, these terms will be defined more carefully in the, in the right class. But you will know that these analyses involve very different theories, and together we will see a lot of different stuff like graphs, lattices, induction, dynamic programming, lot, lots of things. Each family of static analysis uses its own theoretical devices to ensure correctness, for instance. And it might not really look like it, but we we do find all this theory embedded in the implementation of industrial strength compilers. Take graphs, for instance. A typical compiler will use many different kinds of graphs to represent information. Indeed, graphs are the core of any compiler, and many properties of programs are inferred within the framework of graph theory. In this course, you will also get in touch with something called fixed-point theory. That's a key technique that we will be using to demonstrate termination of the algorithms that we will see in the course. In the process of learning about fixed-point theory, we will talk about algebra in general and a particular kind of algebraic structure, which, are, which is called a lattice. We will we'll be also using a lot of induction in the course. Most of the proofs that we will see will be based on induction. In particular, we will learn about a kind of induction called structural, which we will use for almost every demonstration in the course. And we will look into some mechanical ways to verify that the proof is correct. In other words, we will use software to verify if some proof by induction is correct. And in terms of implementation of compilers, we will see a lot of different ways to represent programs. These different representations each show some particular kind of information about the program. Hence, they are useful for different things. 
Something that's interesting about compilers is that they have a lot of support from the open source community. And then we will be touching a few open source implementations of mainstream compilers. In particular, we will see a lot of LLVM. LLVM is a set of tools plus a library to develop compiler-related um, tools. It's fairly used in the industry, for instance. We'll be reading papers too. There will be two paper discussion sections in this course. That will be an opportunity for you getting in touch with the academic research that happens around the construction of compilers. So, I've shown a lot of things that will be covered in, in the course. But don't worry, we will look into each one of those topics much more carefully in the coming days. Today was just a glimpse of what's to come. Till there, you can write me with any comments or suggestions.